Hello everyone, welcome back to Just Invest Today. All my Alibaba shareholders, tell me what you think about this company moving forward. We have earnings very soon. I want to know, do you still believe in the company? Do you still believe in the projections for Alibaba? What the CEO is saying about Alibaba and its future? We're going to get into it because it's been a hard time owning Alibaba for a lot of shareholders out there. Not for me because I still believe in the company. And I want to show you what the CEO has been saying about the future of Alibaba and why I still think this company is super undervalued and has a lot of potential to move to 200, 300, 400 plus a share. So let's get into it in this video. Tell me what you think. Do you believe in it? Do you not? What are you doing with your position if you're an Alibaba shareholder? So let's get into this video right now. Like and comment down below. Before we get into the reasons why I still think Alibaba is super undervalued, look what's been happening with the stock price of Alibaba this year. Year to date, it's down 41%, $72. And that's telling you the story of what's been happening over the past years as people are still afraid of the China-US relationship, the war that might happen or might not happen, who damn knows. We still have the audit rules, people are afraid of the audit rules. People are still afraid of the ADRs. It's uninvestable. They're going to take my shares. So we still have all this freaking just sentiment going against China, creating this 41% drop to date. But if you do great work on the valuation perspective and just understanding the business on what it's going to do in the future, I think this is all noise in the short term. If you're looking over a five to 10 year period, I think it's still all noise. And I want to get into it because Look at the market cap of Alibaba, $187 billion. I want to show you this really quickly. On the balance sheet of Alibaba, it has $41 billion, has $71 billion of just cash, pretty much. $71 billion. So 37% of its market cap is just cash. You're telling me the best company in China right now, Alibaba, Tencent, 37% of just the market cap is just cash? and you can buy it right now, that's just incredible if you really break it down. Can you imagine if Apple or Google, 37% of just the company is just cash? You would run hand over fist to buy that company. That's just one metric to show you how undervalued the business is. You can buy the whole company for 187 billion and 37% of that is just cash. That's not including Ant Financial, the growth of just the whole e-commerce business. like all the international commerce like it's crazy right now what's happening in the market look at the cash flows of the business cash from operation generating 22 billion dollars in 2022 last year 35 billion dollars of cash so if you were to actually buy the whole business i'm not even backing out the cash from that valuation you're getting a 15 percent free cash flow yield if you use 2021 numbers and it's been going down a lot to 14 billion. So you still get a 7% cash flow yield <laughs> just investing in this company. Can you imagine doing that in any other market, getting a 7% return or a 15% return on your money right away? You would do that in an instant. And that's assuming it's gonna stay this way. That's not assuming the cloud growth of the business going forward or the commerce growth of China going forward. That's not even including growth. That's just what it is worth right now but then people are going to say oh my god look at the return on equity only four percent return on capital seven percent yes it's declining hugely and that's having a huge effect on the business but we're going to see what the ceo has been saying on why i think it can go back up to 10 15 percent if it's going to do what it's setting out to do let's get into the commentary of the ceo and what he's been saying and what he sees for the future. Last quarter report for Alibaba. Look what Daniel has been saying. Be ourselves means focusing on the three core strategies, namely consumption. So they want to increase consumption of just China in general. And we're going to see that as GDP grows into the future. Cloud. Cloud grew 10% that last quarter. And if you think about it, they've been building out their cloud business and they're going to continue doing that. Alibaba Cloud opens a new campus the size of Google's Silicon Valley headquarters. They wouldn't be doing this if they're not going to see a crazy increase in cloud and they own 35 percent share of that cloud market what do you think is going to happen in five to ten years when the cloud market is just going to boom as more companies go online they're going to need more cloud computing more storage more data it's just going to happen it's just inevitable at this point that we're going to see 
huge cloud growth into the future, and globalization and delivering high quality growth with ESG as a foundation for reaching our vision of becoming a good company that lasts 102 years. So that's why I'm so bullish. If we really want to buy these long-term growing companies, when a CEO is talking about 102 years of being in business, that just tells you all about the moat of Alibaba and how strong it is when a company has that vision. You don't see a lot of companies talking like that. We already achieved a target of 1 billion annual active consumers in China during the last fiscal year. Going forward, we will focus on growing our wallet share in different consumer segments instead of pursuing further absolute increase in our user base in China. And that's a huge shift. Think about what Alibaba has been doing in the last quarters, the last year. Growth, growth, growth. That's all they've been focusing on. Tabloid deals, getting into that lower consumer segment area. They've been focusing on that because PDD, the competition, has getting in that market. So now that they reach a billion active consumers, they want a bigger portion of that consumer spending just to happen on Alibaba. So they're going to focus on actually generating more income for each user instead of just getting as many users as possible to go on the channel, which has been affecting efficiency, affecting margins, return on capital, return on equity. So let's see what happens as they focus on the consumer segment, the consumer mindshare. In addition, we will also take advantage of our quality of operations in China commerce. Our current scale is much bigger than our peers, and more importantly, our advantage in profitability is even larger. So they're just showing you that they have a larger scale and a larger economics of scale compared to any other company in China. And they're going to take that. They're going to use that as an advantage going forward. And they haven't really been focusing on that scale because they've just been focusing on growth, growth, growth. So now they're going to take advantage of their scale and provide more discounts, provide more opportunities for businesses to grow. Our cloud revenues delivered 10% growth year over year during the quarter. The slowdown in revenue growth was a result of multiple factors, including slowing macroeconomic activities, declining revenue from our top internet customer, softening demand from China internet customers. So as the economy turns, it goes back to where it was before, back in 2020, 2019. Who knows when that's going to happen? It's going to eventually happen, but it might take time for that to happen as China is looking to grow its GDP as the government keeps coming out and saying that, no, we need to get back to growth. They're looking to deliver great economic growth for China. Through operating efficiency, enhancement, and cost optimization, we are still in the process of improving quality of operations across the organization. And this is key. They're going to reduce those losses. So they're going to improve operating efficiencies. And that's going to be key going forward as they want to start generating profits for these companies and not just the companies negatively impacting the business. So what happens when Lazada, Trendable, all these e-commerce plays internationally, when LME, when uh, Yuku, when all of these freaking side businesses generate money for Alibaba, Alibaba's like just operations, the, the cash generation is just going to shoot up like crazy when they're not looking at it just an all out growth strategy. So that's why I'm so optimistic because these companies will start generating money. Because right now, all these businesses are just lost generating operations, but that's going to turn eventually. So that's how I'm seeing this business as like, damn, like looking at it five, 10 years from now, like we can see a lot from these businesses going forward. Now that Alibaba is switching its strategies from just all out growth, reducing all the returns on equity and returns on invested capital to more sustainable, like, yo, we get it. We got to start generating more money on our operations, on all our loss making businesses that are growing like crazy. And they have a healthy balance sheet to do that. This is amazing news from the CEO, Daniel. Guys, what do you think about all of this that I just said? Like this video, comment down below and subscribe to my channel, please. Peace.